Hello, and welcome to Running a Small Building Firm, a podcast brought to you by the HBXL Group for residential building firms, working on renovations, extensions, loft conversions, and new builds. We discuss everything from money and marketing to competitors and contracts. Here, we share advice and best practice, and plenty more. So welcome. So hello there, Um, I'm Joanna Mulgrew and I'm the Managing Director of the HBXL Group and we have a packed panel for this episode of Running a Small Building Firm. Today I'm joined by three others, Um, firstly Andy Morrell, HBXL's very own construction engineer, along with Kevin Morgan, uh, Commercial Director at Crystal Direct and Tom Gorringe, the company's Operations Director. Crystal Direct are manufacturers of PVC windows and doors, um, as well as aluminium bifolds and roof lanterns, amongst other um, products. And I should add that Kevin is no stranger to our podcast, having previously been a guest in our episode two. So welcome to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Hi, Joe. Hello, Joe. So thanks for joining us. Um, Today's topic is building regulations, and this is um, a a subject matter that um, I'm nowhere near as familiar with as uh, my panel of guests today. Um, So the the fundamental purpose of um, the government's building regulations is is, is twofold. Um, it's, It's protecting people's safety, health and welfare as well as improving the conservation of fuel and power and promoting um, all the while sustainable development. Um, And that's a big ask, big ask for the industry. Um, And it's the latter that we're interested in today because the new regulations, that's the new building regulations, all relate to carbon emissions and reducing carbon emissions. So we're going to come on to the specific changes in a moment. Um, But I wanted to ask um, Kevin from his perspective, um, you know, the the topic of carbon emissions is really important to Crystal Direct, uh, I know, as as window and door manufacturers. Um, Can you explain why the government wanted these new regulations in the first place? Yeah, of course. And thanks for inviting me on again, Joe. No yeah, problem. it's um, it's really, really important for us as a manufacturer to understand the regulations and the impact on, on the trade and construction generally. Um, this is all part of the bigger plan to reach net zero. Um, houses uh, c- contribute significantly to carbon emissions. Um, and so the construction industry is expected to play its part um, in, in a system of driving that down. Now, um, there's a big uh, there's a big set of regulation change coming in 2025, which is the future home standards uh, or FSH for short. Uh, that will come into for- force. And at this point, all new homes will have to be net zero ready. Um, so what we're going to be talking about today is kind of all part of that jigsaw puzzle, that prelude, that first step on the mission. Ultimately, the plan is for all UK homes to be net zero by 2050. Yeah, that's uh, as I said before, big, big, big ask. And um, we've got to start now, though. We've got to start somewhere. Uh-huh. Um, so, Andy, um, can you run through um, how the government hopes to make some progress um, with these new requirements, and and why is it significant? We're we're meeting here today on Thursday, the fifteenth of June, twenty twenty three, um, a D Day in building regs. Yeah, I'll go into a bit more of the detail about what they're actually doing in a minute. Um, but I, I guess uh, today's is a bit of a uh, today is is a special day because <laughs> <laughs> um, today is the day where you are going to have to if you're building new houses or extensions um, or renovating a house. In fact, you're going to have to use the new building regulations, which actually came into effect this time last year. Um, but there is a there has been a grace period. Uh, for the past 12 months where you've been able to still um, start a new building to the old regulations um, if those if your original um, approved building regulations approval was under the old regulations um, so today really if you haven't started a project you are going to have to um, update your regulations um, and get reapproval. okay all right so um the changes then, Andy, um, you know, they're quite wide ranging as I as I understand it. Um, can you give us a little bit of a 101 um, on those? I know everyone really needs to read up on, on, on the detail of these, but what, what, what are the headlines that we're talking about? Yeah, so there's two completely new parts of the building regulations um, which have come into force. Uh, you probably will have heard of one of them, maybe not the other. Um, so the first one 
um, which applies only to new buildings, um, so not to extensions, not to renovations, is document S, which is about electrical vehicle charging. Um, so essentially, um, I mean, there are there are obviously more details um, if you go and look at the, the doc new document S, but essentially it's about making sure that every parking space that's provided with a new home um, has uh, electrical vehicle charging already installed in it. Um, so, you know, for, for most for the majority of houses that'll mean um a box on the side of the house or in the garage uh, that's already set up for charging um to have its own dedicated electrical circuit um for flats um then it's likely to be um so dedicated charging units out in the car park um but those now yeah are now mandatory okay um the other new one is uh to do with uh overheating in a heat wave which is quite kind of quite appropriate today um mm -hmm. so uh it's kind of a growing problem with hot summers that have that um actually houses that are kind of really well built and well insulated do keep the heat out as well as in um but we've uh you know it's it's kind of been found that um quite a lot of houses are what we would now consider to be overglazed um so you get a lot of um, heat buildup during the day when it's very hot um, from sun coming in through the windows. Uh, so this new part O um, aims to stop that being quite so much of a problem. So it basically limits the amount of glazing you can have, um, particularly on south and west facing um, facades. So where the sun's going to be at its hottest uh, during the afternoon and the evening. Um, there are there are other ways around it. It's not necessarily about having less glazing. You can provide you can provide shading to that glazing. So it's very much about just stopping the heat from the sun um, heating your building up too much. And then the other element of it is having suitable provision for getting that heat back out um, when you want to go bed go to bed at night. Um, so the the kind of obvious default solution is to have plenty of windows and doors uh, that you can open. And um, it's called kind of purging um, the heat. Uh, you can also do that with mechanical ventilation, but I think the standard the standard thing is going to happen on most houses is going to be um, just more openable windows and doors. Uh, They're not glazed. <laughs> <laughs> well, they'll be <laughs> they'll be glazed, <laughs> but uh, but yeah. yeah, it's very much. When the when the temperature starts to drop, you want to be able to get a, a through breeze through. So there are different rules. Um, if you have like a flat that only has windows on one side, then the rules are a bit more strict in terms of um, limiting the solar gain uh, because it's much harder without being able to get your doors at the front and the back of the house open. It's yeah. much harder to get a breeze through and cool it all down again, um, ready to go to sleep at night. Okay. Um, all righty. So those ones are completely new. They both only apply to new buildings. Um there are also changes to two of the existing um, uh, part. Uh, there's, there's part um, part L and part F okay. of the building regulations, and I'll I'll do a little little bit about those. Um, so document F is to do with ventilation. Um, kind of overlaps, obviously, with the uh, with the one we've just been talking about. Um, but this is more to do with uh, getting moisture out of your house. Um, so to prevent uh, mold growth, it's actually a very minor tweak that's happened uh, to the part F uh, this time around. Um, and that is really just about um, when you do any kind of thermal upgrades to an existing house. So that might be um, insulating the walls or the floors or ceilings more, or it might just be changing out the windows and doors. Um, all those things will uh, make it more thermally efficient. And uh, this uh, change just says that when you've done that, uh, you need to make sure there's sufficient ventilation. Um, that wasn't really the case before. You just you just had to make it not worse than it was before. Um, but there's now a stipulation that you have to improve it. Um, so, Tom, do you want to tell us a little bit about how that's going to be achieved? Yeah. So, I mean, trickle vents have been around for years. We've all probably got them in, in our houses. Um, it's been mandatory in new builds 
for, for a long period of time. But obviously, as Andy said, with um, with retrofitting your windows and doors, you only had to put them in if they were there originally. So, But now it is mandatory. So every replacement, unless you've got a mechanical ventilation system um, or you're putting one in, you would have to request trickle vents on, on quote or an order and we would put those in. So is that is that a, is that an option still to, to 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 that you have to request, or are they on 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 all windows as standard? Um, Tom, we we invariably, if you don't ask, we would yeah. put them on and say you haven't asked. Yeah, if that, yeah. we would make you aware that you haven't asked, and actually they're mandatory. Yeah. yeah so yeah. and we've been doing that since fifteenth of June last year. Yeah. Okay. And leading yeah. up to it. Yes. Okay. Right then, so Andy, document L, um, yeah, more more on that. Yes, yeah, so document L, um, slightly complicated because uh, in document L, things are quite different between um, new build and um, an extension or renovations. Um, so so things... remind me, what, what's doc... which is document L? What does document L so, govern again? So Apologies. document L is uh, thermal performance of a building, um, okay. basically. So it's to do with... Um, uh, U-values and so how much heat your building loses and also about kind of the efficiency of your heating systems and your um, your electrics and that sort of thing. Energy retention is So it? very much, yeah, this is, part L is very much the crux of the kind of uh, zero carbon yeah. uh, stuff, really. That's where it all happens. Um, so in terms of the new changes to new build regulations, it's it's been quite limited this time because we've been making incremental changes towards this carbon zero um, standard for, for quite a while now, actually. There was so, a big Partel change, wasn't there, a few years back? So I guess was, a lot of that, had been, yes. that work had been mocked up during that previous... Um, so this is a little bit more of just a, a little push, um, and it actually pushes a few different technologies which have um, sort of matured a little bit over recent years um, so um, they're kind of their model house that they say you know if you copy this kind of basic design of how the house's thermal elements and things go together you will pass building regulations um, there's always flexibility around that you can you, you can you can change what you actually do but they provide this kind of model house uh, to give you a bit of a, a guidance when you're doing design work. And that house that they use as their model now, um, they kind of strongly encourage the use of wastewater heat recovery systems for showers. That's quite a new thing. Um, so they are, when you're installing a new shower, it's pretty cheap to install one of these things. It just um, uses some of the waste heat that's going out with your shower, you know, you, you, with your wastewater from your shower uh, to heat the water that's then coming back in um, so it's quite a nice easy win um, for a new build it's quite hard to put one into you know an existing house it can be so so that's one new emphasis um, there's also a bigger emphasis on installing um, uh, PV panels so uh, for producing electricity um, on your roof um, and then the only other real thing that's changed, uh, there's two other kind of minor tweaks that have happened for new builds. One is that they're encouraging you to put a little bit more insulation in your roof. And the other one is that they're also encouraging you to specify um, slightly better performing windows and doors um, in terms of view values. Um, the big change, though, in uh, document L is for... Um, uh, extensions and and renovation work um so extensions of it's been a little bit funny for about the last six years i think that extension the the kind of building regulations for extensions have been quite a lot more relaxed than they have been for the new builds and this update basically pushes them up to pretty much the same level in terms of thermal performance um, so there's a kind of recognition that it's a it's become a bit odd that you could build an extension to you know um, to lesser standards than you were able to do with the new build. Um, so that's kind of been that's kind of been rectified. And then the kind of the final thing that they've introduced with Part L is um, 
trying to get everybody ready for being able to use uh, heat pumps in their homes for heating. Uh, so there are two elements to that. One is that if you are designing a heating system, you have to have given consideration to whether it would be a good idea to install a heat pump or not. That doesn't oblige you to put one in, but it does but consider it. Just it consider does oblige it. you to have had an assessment done um, to see whether it's a good idea. At the moment, that'll usually it usually will be a good idea if you're replacing um, oil heating. So if you're off the gas grid, it's still a little bit, you know, up in the air whether it's a good idea um, if you are on the gas grid or not. But obviously, a specific assessment for your property will help guide you with that um, but the other element of this is to actually make sure your whole heating system is designed uh, to work with a heat pump so heat pumps work with um, lower water temperatures than a than a gas central heating system would so you're going to need um, basically more efficient pipe work and um, and probably larger radiators or, or heat emitters um, under floor heating is very good um, yeah. so it's about if you if you're putting a new heating system in it's got to be ready um so that's so, on that so that's on right say on a renovation project as well um you're replacing the heating system yes right? so any replacement heating system is going to need to be uh heat pump ready yeah yeah that's right okay all righty. So it sounds like there's a big focus on U values then within um, within Part L. Um, and I know, Tom, from your side, I know you, you know you know a lot about this, and perhaps you could um, jump in and uh, give, give Andy a rest a moment. Thank you, Andy, for that uh, brief overview. Thank you, Andy. Um, yeah. So the U values have, have been reduced for both replacement, which obviously and extensions and new builds. So whereas a replacement used to be one point six, which at Crystal, we could achieve that with a C-rated window. Um, it's now gone down to 1.4. So obviously, the lower the U value, so we're reducing it from 1.6 to 1.4, means the less heat is let out, which obviously increases your, your heating, which is what this is about. Um, so our A-rated window is 1.3. So actually, is better than the 1.4, and that's just that's just our standard window now. So and we've been doing that since since June um, last year, 15th, okay. as we said. On new builds, it's reduced down to 1.2. So where it was 1.4, it's got down to 1.2. Now, obviously, with new builds, you have a limiting value, which was at 2, has now dropped down to 1.6. So we could put a 1.3 uh, window in, and you would just have to offset that 0.1 um, that you would need to find somewhere else in, in the fabric or the makeup of the building. Okay. So you're using a combination, so the builder will be using a combination of techniques to get get the limiting value to where it needs to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or if you want to go down to 1.2, we can do a triple glazed window. So we're just increasing, adding a sheet of glass, increasing low E, reducing the U value to 1.0. And then you might be able to, you know, you've got 0.2 yeah. to play with somewhere else in, in the house. Yeah. What do you find most um, most uh orders are for are they for going triple glazing so they would get down at the one the 1 1.2 or, or are, they, are people kind of at going for the standard 1.3 and and um you know through through the rest of the envelope it, it, i suppose it kind of depends how the order comes to us if we receive a set of plans we would be it would say 1.2 at that point to achieve 1.2 we would be putting triple glazed in those windows to yeah. send it back if at that point that hasn't changed if they've requested 1.3 or 1.4, yeah. they've already thought about that limiting value, it would be an A-rated window. Yeah, okay. All right. Certainly more awareness of it, isn't there, Tom, in terms of um, going yeah. that extra mile. Um, I was reading an article yesterday in Glass Times that, that was talking about triple. I think the headline was triple or bust. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, the, and, the, and, and the need for the industry to get their head around the fact that triple glaze is going to become more popular from 2025. Yeah. And, and there's an expectation, I think, that, you know, people will be working to below that, you know, around 0.9 is, is, is also sort of being muted within the industry. So, yeah. you know, and we've got to react to that again as a, as, a, as a commercial manufacturer supplying a lot of different types of customer. As I referenced earlier, a lot of the retailers are getting their head around what a better home or what a, 
model house looks like. Um, and, you know, very much glazing is part of that. And also, you know, Tom's done a good job there outlining the, what U values are and what spec they need to be. Also, uh, obviously, affects doors too. Yes. So, you know, um, for us in the industry, we have to be one step ahead. And um, so, yeah, you know, it can be seen as a bit of a, a bit of a, it was interesting. I was listening to, to Andy earlier, you know, and you kind of sit there thinking, why is the government worried about me having too much heat in my house? You know, why do I need to have the ability to 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 get rid of all of this quickly? And it is kind of bizarre. And when we think about trickle vents, you know, we talk, talk about heat retention and then we talk about letting heat out in a funny sort of way, don't we? So, yeah, the two yeah. sides of the of the same coin, aren't they? In different in yeah. different weather scenarios, you need to be able to uh, to, to to respond. Um, and yeah, I guess the, the the weather in this country is is, is rather funny. Is it? We have quite a lot of humidity, then flips very hot, very dry, like it is at the moment, and then again storms, damp, yeah. whatever. Um, yeah, floods. It's, yeah. floods. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So tell me about um, doors then. I think um, Tom, um, you know, on things like opaque doors and semi glazed doors, what's what's the you so doors are going down to yeah doors are going down to 1.0 for the doors so right, that, okay. that's what it would need to be and yeah. we would expect those to be shown on a plan by by an architect or yeah. or requested yeah and what so what was it before 1.6 okay right okay all righty um so um obviously you guys have responded as as you have you said get my teeth back in as you said <laughs> I'm obviously I'm, I'm, I'm overwhelmed with you value information um so lots to take in there um so I, I would say that we put a summary article on the HBXL website which outlines um what we've been talking about um today and um, Andy quick question where can somebody I'm sure most builders know but where can someone find out more information um on on the building regs changes um from from the government perspective the full documents and presumably there's full information out there on, on the planning portal or something like that there is the planning portal is the place to go and actually i was there uh yesterday and they've just put on a new uh guide to the building regulations as well which is quite helpful um so that's about guiding you into knowing um yeah when you do and don't need building regulations for certain work yeah. um, actually this was part of the part of their review of building regulations that kind of came about after the inquiries into grenfell um yeah. so they've they've put together some really quite useful um and and for the government really quite accessible documents <laughs> yes <laughs> um, yeah to help yeah. you and they've also they've also put all the building regulations together into one document as well um which if you are um you know needing to study them in detail is quite handy as well you used to have to go and pick up each one individually uh download yeah. it and look at it but that that is so that that's all there and it, it is it's a bit nicer to use than it used to yeah. be. Yeah, I guess all of these things interact with each other, don't they? Because as um, as Kevin was saying, you know, on the one hand, you know, you're trying to improve um, the thermal performance, and on the other hand, you're trying to, you know, get airflow, and you know, all, all the all of these is how they all interact. It's quite it's quite sophisticated, isn't it, in terms of the the what, what you have to do? Um, yeah. Now. I mean, yes. So sort of improving one thing causes you another problem somewhere else. But I, I think the the kind of trajectory of where we've been going for several years is to make sure we've got control over what's happening so yes you need to um you you know you've got this bizarre thing of trying to make your house really efficient and not lose heat but at the same time you're ventilating it but it's been yeah. very much about making sure you have control of those different elements so when you need to be able to change things around you can you know oh it's really hot let's yeah. get the heat out um yeah. older buildings were not really very good at that um you kind yeah. of just you know you, you just see what happens in your house but this yeah is much more about i guess that's an interesting it. one and we won't we won't have time to talk about it today but it's when you're renovating an older property um and how these new measures actually kind of interact with those older methods of construction you know um because i think you know you could be insulating more but then you've perhaps got um problems with kind of mold and that kind of thing um so yeah but a whole different subject um, i imagine or, or for, for another day but is there, is there anything that you want to add andy in terms of um regs and any potential issues that people might have um um i was just going to kind of reiterate a little bit about the um the, the kind of significance of of today's date and um 
having having I don't think I mentioned before about the idea of significant work having started when I said you needed to have started uh, your project before today um if what does that mean done, then S if you have done work. yeah so if you have done groundworks of any sort really um that means you have started significant work so it might be um it might be you've just excavated the foundations so if you excavated the foundations yesterday on a project you are still okay to go on the building regulations that they were approved under um yeah. well yeah. just to add to that um andy actually i um, i understood as well um just to add to the fun that that's per plot so you might have got building regs for say 10 10 houses on a site but that significant work has got to be for the individual plot um, so just because you started plot one doesn't mean that you've got um, you can build to all building regs on you know two three four five six seven eight nine ten um, you know that's only for that that one um, so it's per, per per plot so things like your services going in has got to be for that plot. Okay, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't specifically aware of that. Yeah, but yeah. I think again, yeah, that's kind of the the um, the direction that things are going in a little bit more um, on yes. a plot by plot plot basis i know that yes. the 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 um air pressure testing has also got to be done house by house now it was just a give us sample. A, a sample house <laughs> yeah, which i think yeah. led to a certain amount of naughtiness <laughs> yes yeah you can imagine it would yeah. yeah i mean all these things cost extra money don't they so you need to be aware of the um you know of these changes so that you're not having to come back cap in hand to your client later on um having had to um you know to, to think about these things in a in a retrospective way so really need to gen up right now if you haven't already and go and look at one of those model houses or model projects on the planning portal um but yeah sorry andy i i, I interrupted your flow about this transition before we sign off um yeah i mean i don't think i had anything much more to say really i mean in a way there's kind of it none of this is new because th these are these are the regulations that came in as tom was saying june last year um but if you are yeah if you're on site you might not be quite so aware of that um but you do need to be uh making sure that you are building to the new regs now um, yeah so i guess in summary then if you haven't got meaningful work done now you've got to uh, resubmit get new regs start under new regs um and that, I guess that's about it, isn't it, really? I think pretty much everything's got to be built now to, 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 to new regs, unless you have already started as of yesterday. Yeah. So if you're listening yes. today, that's old news. <laughs> so, um, right, OK. Perhaps we should um, have done this a month ago. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Uh, we just wanted to celebrate yeah. <laughs> today. Um, so, uh, yeah, Andy, thank you very much. Um, and um, there is some more advice on the HBXL website, as we said, and, said, and do visit um, Planning Portal. Um, Kevin, um, can I leave a last word with you at all? Um, yeah, just, um, well, I, I guess, you know, just to say that building regulations, as you just said, Joe, um, do uh, present some extra cost, potentially, um, for um, builders and homeowners, um, you know, and, and all of, all of these um, improvements we're making indeed do do mean passing on that cost. But I guess if we're all going to play a part in this and and make inroads um, mm -hmm. towards the carbon emission reduction, then these new regulations are, are a step forward. Um, we're going to continue to be one step ahead as a business, as a company, uh, continuing to point, uh, you know, to support the trade and retail in. Um, giving them the choice, the right choices to to meet these targets and regulations. Um, so yeah, that's it really for me. And 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 all I would say finally is, you know, if you have got any window and door needs, then come to Crystal Direct. Oh, and and I guess you you've got the team there to uh, to to advise if people aren't sure. You know, if they, if they're not sure, what what should I be doing with this particular? I'm, I'm renovating this house. What 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 value value should I be putting in? I'm sure you've got the team there that can say, right, okay, well, our understanding is for this type of project, this is what you need to do. Yeah, absolutely. And there are links from our website around you know this type of documentation that can help with yeah. that type of education. So yeah. Absolutely. Great stuff. Well, we really must um, um, finish there. So thank you very much, Kevin, Tom, Andy, for your time and uh, for, for informing me as well. Um, and everyone watching, have a look at the HBXL website for a bit more guidance and obviously the government websites, as we've said. And of course, now there's some info um, on, on Crystal Direct's website too. You can find out more about their range and their service. 
and um, you can give them a shout on 01462 489 900 um, or you can email them at hbxl and crystal-direct.co.uk so thank you everybody um, for watching I hope that's been um, informative um, and that's it from from all of us today thank you everybody cheers Thank you. Thank, you. Bye -bye. Thank you guys. Bye -bye. Cheers. Bye. And if you'd like to see what positive changes you could make to your building firm, head over to hbxl.co.uk and take a look at HBXL's award-winning, estimating, CAD and health and safety software, as well as our partner company initiatives. See you next time.